A team of physicists has calculated that black holes could form inside of stars and eat them from within. I was fully prepared to dismiss this as nonsense, but after reading the paper I'm afraid it's kind of plausible. Does this mean that there might be a black hole growing in our sun? Let's have a look. High quality journalism is getting harder to find each day, but at The Economist you not only find excellent reporting, you can now also get a big discount on it. The Economist offers journalism for people who want facts and can think for themselves. They report on global affairs, economics, politics, but also developments in technology and science. I find their reporting generally balanced and well researched. Just the other week, for example, they had a great article about the potential economic consequences of super intelligent AI. It leaves aside all the apocalyptic tales and instead summarizes what various economic models are forecasting with all the ifs, buts, and caveats. I was actually impressed. It's not just well written and informative, it's also original reporting that I didn't see anywhere else. Personally, I like sitting in the garden and munching biscuits over the print issue so that my husband has something to complain about, but they do of course have an online version and an app where you can listen to audio versions of the articles and the full weekly edition along with podcasts and short videos. And the special offer today is that you can get 50% off your subscription. All you need to do is use my link economy com slash Sabine and now back to the science news. For about a decade there has been tentative evidence that black holes can have masses below two and a half solar masses. This is very difficult to explain with the standard mechanism for black hole production which is a stellar collapse. This is because the star needs to have a certain minimum mass to even form a black hole so the black hole can't be too small. They could be primordial black holes that have just been there since the beginning of the universe but that'd be extremely odd, because why would primordial black holes have a mass just about that of normal stars and not any other? That doesn't make any sense. The authors now say that actually this problem was solved decades ago in the early days of dark matter searches, because already back then some physicists pointed out that dark matter particles under very general circumstances would accumulate in stars, because well, stars have a gravitational pull. And one of the key characteristics of dark matter is that it can't build up internal pressure, so it collapses much more easily than normal matter. This indeed is why we need dark matter in the early universe. Without dark matter, the formation of galaxies would be way too slow. This is one of the big plus points of the dark matter hypothesis, that it explains structure formation. If dark matter accumulates in stars, which it plausibly could, then it can collapse in these stars to form a small black hole. This can happen for dark matter particles in the range of 100 GV or so, as long as they don't self-annihilate. Such dark matter particles are compatible with all other existing bounds. The dark matter would see tiny black holes in stars. They call them parasitic black holes because they then grow by pulling in more and more matter from the star until it collapses. The black hole that's generated that way could have a mass smaller than what's needed for core collapse. In the new paper they calculate how long this would take for different types of stars. They say that neutron stars, which are as dense as a star can be without being a black hole, can get eaten up very quickly within a few 10,000 years or so, blink of an eye cosmologically speaking. For neutron stars that spin very fast, it can take much longer, potentially millions of years, and by then maybe even I'll have come around to reply to your email. For white dwarfs, which are still atomic matter, not nuclear matter, and therefore have a much lower density, it'd take much longer for the black holes to grow. Indeed, the authors say most of them would never collapse. Rather, the black hole would eat out a polar funnel, that's a hole around the spin axis. The matter that's further outside is protected by the centripetal force, basically. What about stars like our sun? 
I've good news. They can't grow black holes. You see, black holes decay by Hawking radiation. So if dark matter forms a black hole inside a star, it'll only survive if it eats up matter from the star faster than it can emit matter from Hawking radiation. Normal stars like our Sun just have too low a density for this to work. Also, if this was possible, we'd see stars blink out every once in a while and no one's ever observed something like this. By the way, this video comes with a quiz that lets you check how much you remember. What are we to make of this? The evidence for small mass black holes is so tentative as to be non-existent. There have been some gravitational wave events where one seems to have been involved, but then again, maybe that was a neutron star. There has been the occasional microlensing observation with suspiciously small masses, but for one thing, the error bars are large and again maybe it was just a neutron star. So basically there's no evidence backing up this idea. Still, I don't think it's complete nonsense. On the bullshit meter I give it an 8 out of 10, which for dark matter research is pretty good. This is because it works with fairly general types of dark matter particles and doesn't require all that many parameters to fit together. And the idea that dark matter sneaks into stars, collapses them and eats them from the inside is also a pretty good metaphor for modern academia. Thanks for watching. See you tomorrow.